Cheer up, you're watching my video now. Okay. All you really need in order to take your photos to the next level is Photoshop Camera Raw and you don't even need all of it. My name is Moshe Levis and I've been doing landscape photography for about eight years now. So uh, I know a thing or two and uh, hopefully you can learn a thing or two. Uh, now that you know who I am, uh, let's begin. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is obviously open a picture. This picture was taken in uh, Sand Dunes uh, National Park in Colorado. It's a really great place and if you've never been there, you should go visit. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my horizon is straight. And to do that, I'm going to go to the crop tool and I'm very simply going to press the automatic level right here. And that's it, horizons are straight. Now we're going to go back to the overall editing tool and this is where I'm going to start with the light. I want to decide what the overall lighting of my picture is going to be and I say I want to decide because photography is still art and even though I took that specific picture and it has a specific natural look, I can choose how I want to uh, express what I experienced there because maybe the picture is more flat than reality. Maybe the picture is more exposed than reality. Maybe I want to exaggerate what I saw and so on. So if you're a photographer, you know you're an artist and you have the choice of doing whatever the hell you want with your images. Just, you know, try not to use a uh, generative feel, please. <laughs> Okay, so let's open the light tab and very quickly we're going to go through these sliders. Let's start with the exposure. Does the exposure look right to you? If it does, leave it alone. If it doesn't, move it. Exposure is great, no problems there. If you want, you can read the histogram. Sorry, I don't do that. <laughs> I just edit what I see, okay? Kill me. Anyway. Let's go back, uh, go to the black sliders and move it up or down, okay? If you go up, it's gonna decrease the blacks. If you go down, it's going to increase the blacks of the picture, Make, give it more contrast or less contrast, okay? So we're going to go down with the blacks until I'm satisfied with it. And I like that. After adjusting my blacks, I'm. I usually adjust my whites, so I'm gonna go to the right with my whites because I want I want more light in my picture, so it, I'll have more contrast. And I'm gonna take it up extremely just to see how it looks. I'm gonna take it down a notch up to here. And then I'm going to go to the shadows and decide if I want to open or close my shadows, meaning if I want to see more details where the shadows are. So. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna go and open up the shadows. I'm gonna go and close some of the shadows. So in this picture, usually I open the shadows, but in this picture, I'm going to lower my shadows a little bit. And then I almost always lower the highlights because when you lower the highlights, you see more information in those highlights. Uh, and when you, uh, take the highlights up. It means that it means that you kind of lose information uh, and just start seeing white. So I usually I take the highlights down. Let's take them all the way down, all the way up. You see what I'm talking about? So in this specific picture, I'm going to take it a little bit down, and then let's play with the contrast a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of more contrast. Okay, like that, and that's it. After I'm done with my overall lighting for the for this picture, I will go and decide on what specific locations I want more light or less light. Let's click the masking tool and choose a brush. Okay, and I use the brackets uh, left and right to make the brush bigger or smaller. Okay, left is smaller, right is bigger. Um, let's uh, do something like this. And I want to select only the sand dunes, okay? So 
selecting only the sand dunes like this and as you can see it colors them in red meaning everything that is in red right now is going to be affected and I don't really have to be precise with it okay now I can go down here and play with the lights and it's going to control only the sand dunes okay so let's turn off the show overlay all right and then uh, just show you an example of uh, how it looks like if you overexpose it or underexpose it okay there you go okay so now uh, let's click this again and I would like to take my highlights up this time to the right and then bring the shadows down even more like this and then take the whites up again even more and take the blacks down even more like this okay so there's a lot more contrast on the sand dunes themselves perfect and then I can increase the exposure a little bit not too much just like that now instead of a brush I'm going to use a uh, da -da 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 -da, another mask and let's use the linear gradient and this time I'm going to drag a gradient from the top to the bottom right here like that and as you can see it's going to control the skies and the mountains and just a touch of the dunes doesn't really matter and I'm going to make sure that this part of the image is going to be uh, a little bit darker okay because it needs I want it to be a little moody so let's see how that goes I'm gonna go and take the exposure a little bit down okay and I'm gonna go and bring the highlights a little bit up shadows a little down blacks a little bit down and whites I'm actually gonna bring up because I want to, to have a, a nice contrast between the darks and the lights of the clouds okay now that we've done that we create another mask another linear mask and we go from bottom to top I'm gonna press shift so it's gonna go straight up and then turn off show overlay and let's bring up a little bit of the exposure of this foreground okay now after I'm happy with the lighting of my picture I'm taking a sip ah, grapefruit so good for you and aside from drinking grapefruit when you're happy with the lighting that you created you can go ahead and close that and that and go back to the original um, editing tool I don't know what you call it but the main screen okay and then I go to color mixer in the color mixer I can control each and every color and decide if the color matches to what I want to present okay so the blues in my opinion are a little bit too strong so when I'm here in the saturation tab I'm going to lower the blues just a little bit like that and the luminance I'm going to also lower and that's going to give me a more dramatic look okay so because luminance it means it's going to have less light on the blues okay so there you go something like that and then I'm going to go back to saturation and decide how I want the dunes <coughs> how I want the dunes to look so let's pick the oranges yep the oranges it is so let's pick the oranges and bring them up a little bit and 
and then we pick the reds and bring them up a little bit And that's it. I think yellows are going to be the foreground. Okay, so let's bring the yellows a little bit up as well. And then I'm going to go to luminance and do the same thing. So I want the oranges darker so I can actually see their color. And then I'm going to take the yellows and make them a little bit darker. And as well as the reds. can also go and play with the purples and magentas to see if they control anything and they they do control the darker areas of the sand dunes so I will take them all the way to the left all right and then with the saturation let's see what they hmm, interesting uh, let's go with a little bit more oranges uh, and reds okay now after I'm done with coloring my picture I can go to the effects tab it, and that's where I uh, adjust the texture clarity which it's practically means that it makes the picture looks more look more sharp or less sharp so let's up, I usually just, you know, up the texture a little bit and let's zoom in for a second. Press spacebar to move the image up and down. And then I'm going to take the texture up. You see how this works? Less texture, more texture. So let's go to zero, and then take the texture all the way to 40. And then clarity will be similar clear, unclear. Okay, so let's up clarity a little bit. And then I don't care about the hazing right now and I don't want grain. Okay, let's go to detail. And in detail, I can sharpen the image a little more, which is, and, and this sharpener sharpening and this this sharpening is a little more accurate and better okay so let's up this a little bit something like this and then go to optics zoom out remove chromatic aberrations which are the lines at the edges of the contrasting uh, colors okay so when you take pictures, you'll have, most likely you'll have chromatic aberration and they will look like purples or greens and blues most of the time. And those are going to be here in the edges. It really depends how much contrast and how much light you have between those two, okay? So right now I don't have much, if at all, because there wasn't too much light behind the mountain. So I'm just gonna click it anyway. And then sometimes I use uh, the profile corrections because it's going to correct the picture according to the lens that I'm using, okay? I'm using a Nikon and it's a uh, Nikon uh, uh, 24 to uh, 120. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, this time it works, at least for me. And now that I'm happy with this overall light and color, I go ahead and check if I have any kinds of dust speckles and any kind of dirt from uh, the sensor of my camera because, uh, well, I haven't cleaned the camera, uh, the sensor for a very long time. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of speckles to clean, okay? Instead of going to Photoshop and do, I'm just staying in camera raw and I'm gonna go to the uh, remove tool and press my speckle gone press it again over here gone let's see if there's more there's right over here and right over here i'm gonna find a bunch of those and in a second i will show you a way 
in Photoshop after you, uh, you after you're done with Camera Raw, I'm going to show you a way how to see practically all your speckles. Okay, speckles, dust, whatever you want to call it. I think I'm pretty much done. At least to my naked eye right now. Okay, so after we're done with editing this image, we are going to open it into Photoshop. Now you don't really have to go through this step because I mentioned that all you need is camera raw, but in case you want to make sure you have no dust speckles from your from your lens from your sensor, uh, you can just do this. Create a new adjustment layer of levels. Take the dark slider all the way down like this and then take the middle slider up like this and this will help you see a little better if you have any kinds of speckles that you missed okay so let's see let's see, check it out i'm pretty sure yeah, this i could remove that but that's fine Zoom out a little bit. Okay. I guess my 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 sensor is uh, cleaner than I thought. Because I remember it was very dirty a while back. All right. Maybe somewhere over here. Okay, that's it. So command or control zero to zoom out and fit the image and then we can just delete this and here is our picture all ready and edited all right now that we're done with this image we can do the same to a different image let's take this guy over here this little birdie here okay let's click the horizons make sure that they are straight Ooh. Let's press auto. Sometimes it doesn't work the way you want it to work. Okay, so I think the horizons are actually good. Let's go to the lights, bring up the whites like this, bring down the blacks a little bit like this. Open up the shadows because I want to see what's in those shadows. And I'm going to go all the way this time and make the blacks even darker. And take the highlights down like this exposure is fine like that and then I can go and do some gradient masking right now like this and get rid of that lights Let's take some oh, exposure down on the light over here. And then I could go and create another mask, radial mask, and just choose my little birdie right here. And make sure we can see it better. Okay, but right now you see how awful that is, right? So I can just go here and make, press shift, so it's going to stay a circle, and then grow this thing right like that, and then feather, I'll have more feathering in here. Okay, let's go all the way like this and then I can up this a little bit more and then more bring out the shadows and the lights and like this all right now I can go to my colors overall colors let's go to overall colors color mixer um, and play with the oranges okay 
the luminance of the oranges I want them to be a little bit darker the sky I want to have be a little bit darker actually let's make this like that a saturation let's make this like that yellows a little more saturated um, then I can change the hue of this if I want like this and this and now that I'm happy with the colors let's go and play with the sharpness texture let's make it see more texture more clarity and then details let's sharpen it further look at this little guy sharpening beautiful see usually I don't like taking it all the way but uh, I don't see the quality degrading too much so but anyway it's gonna go make it even a hundred that's it and I am happy with this image open it I didn't check for speckles so let's do this one step right here da -da 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 levels go this all the way down take this up like this okay zoom in that's pretty clean wow I'm very impressed very impressed here see let's go the opposite see oh very good all right delete okay there you go so let's save these two images and see the before and after this and this let's look at the before and after before and after before after before after let's look at this guy and this guy before after what a what a difference wow <laughs> before and after and all I did really was using camera raw that's about it it didn't take that long right I hope so anyway I hope you enjoyed it that you learned a thing or two even if it was dumb as hell I enjoyed it cheers